Well, he was. Seth mentioned the coffee table book. So I would like to do that, sure. And I hope that I do. And I have thought of that for sure. I mean, I've definitely thought of different platforms for RV Theology, but really, like right now, I have it on my YouTube where I do like uh, single standalone episodes for, for, for one subject, and I can't even get around to doing that. But I always think I'm going to, you know, like I really thought, like I thought yesterday that I was going to do that today. Like I, I got like three or four in mind, and I always think I'm going to do it, but it's never the right time. You know, yeah, yeah, that's, no. how, that's how my list goes. It's always, it's like that uh, revolving sushi at the, those you restaurants. Know where you go, yeah. Um, no, 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 it's gonna come around again, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. how a lot of really big, important projects are for me, where I just know. Like, boom, this one can't f- fail. People are going to love it, you know, and boom. And, and, and the longer I wait on a lot of those, the less original they become, which <laughs> is something I've learned. You know, other people start doing things that are offensively close to it. You know, I was like, oh, damn, that's kind of like my idea, you know, taken to a different way. And, and that happens. That's part of it. But it doesn't stress me out anymore. I used to think. You know, like, got to do this, got to get it out, need it by now. And now it's just like, eh, so what if I, so what if I rented an office for like 12 months and sat in an office to write 65% of a script and I've never gotten back to it? So what? Maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the experience too, just doing it. You know, even if you, sometimes you don't finish it, just putting stuff out there is like even if that wasn't my original goal my original goal is to share it so other people could see this you know in a live action but but also i also feel like i'm just going to be around forever and i always feel like uh, whenever the older years come i don't know what age that is but i always figured that uh eventually i would get old and stop wrestling and then um i just pictured me wearing glasses and having white hair and figured that uh, I would have so much to do then. Like I would never run out of opportunities, especially if, if I want to be a writer or if I want to be a different kind of producer, you know, in some of the fields that I have experience in now or by the time I reach that age. But that's something too, you know, like um, a lot of people would call it procrastinating, like my dad. <laughs> but uh, that's just, that I, I know that about myself and I'm okay with it. Creative people tend to procrastinate a little bit more too. I do that all the time. There's so much stuff that I have in my, that I want to do and I'm like, Oh, I'll get to it. Or I want to, I like, I want to write a book. I want to do all this other stuff. And it's always in my head, but it's just like, oh, I'll get to it when I get to it. Kind of. So I live with the fact that it's possible. Some of the stuff, maybe I won't ever get to it. Yeah, you know? just, just don't know. It's just like whenever, if, if you feel like doing it, do it. <laughs> I feel like I've accomplished a lot. That's one advantage I have over maybe a lot of people that haven't, you know, quite been fulfilled by living their dreams or, or chasing their goals or, or something like that. You know, I, I, I definitely think that that gives me some leverage to where I can say, Hey, what do you want from me? Hey, what look what me? I did here. Look what I did here with this, what am I giving with, you? with this 190 pound battle Creek barbarian body. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, how much do you bench? <laughs> right. Bitch, you want to do a squat off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sheik told me that one time, too. And yeah. it's an inside joke for me and Sabu, like forever. This was before that, because um, that was 91, uh, December 91, when I went to Jamaica. And this was, this would have been, uh, well, just a year, it would have been in 90. We're training in the backyard. And uh, Sheik's got all this oil. He's rubbing all over himself, getting sun while we're training. And he and he and he looked at me, and he said, uh, "You need to you need to start doing some of these arm things." And I was, of course, just you know, same feeling. My yeah. ego was insulted, just the same. And and Sabu <laughs> knew that I worked out and stuff, and that you know, so he, he always still sometimes will say that to me. You need to do some of those arm things. <laughs> you need some of those arm things. That will be funny forever. Yeah. Great. Like I, 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 I do. He's like, maybe, maybe you're not doing it right. <laughs> I thought I looked good. 
<laughs> Get those power cuffs, the DDP power cuffs. I even had the tank top because I knew I looked so good. Wearing the wife beater everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Imaginary last syndrome. Can't fit <laughs> through the doorway. You got to go sideways, guys. Yeah. Go sideways. yeah, I had that fun stage around then. And uh, he, him and Nancy busted my bubble. Busted it.